Hello and welcome by the Orchid Saga. So, uh, my name is Ilkian Wiersma, I'm an orchid growth from the Netherlands. I just uh, always keep forgetting and adding this into my videos for those who are interested in. So you have a little bit of an idea of the climate I'm living in. Fairly wet. Uh, but anyhow, so in the background you see my um, family opsis, Leodoro. And um, yeah, I thought it would be a good idea to plant her in a bigger pot. She has quite some aerial roots, as you can see, they are all the way up here and they were even a little bit longer, but I tangled in them in this phase. I put some RO water in this phase uh, with some, a little bit of kelp and I have these uh, cloths here. Well, actually they, they are sort of uh, a paper towel, but um, they they feel like like more like uh, they have a thicker texture so they don't break even when they are wet so it's not really technically a clock but uh, anyhow so that's uh, and it's very wicking and it keeps uh, takes up a very amount a big amount of moisture so I wrap that around the roots uh, going upwards uh, and I hope and I can see that for some it's uh, roots is working to let them green up so they take up more moisture because we're going to repot this one. Uh, it has some dead roots in the pot, which was to be expected because it's in this pot for years. And I think it could do with a uh, repotting. It's not that it's not doing well, but I see some signs, I think, that it, it would like to have a better uh, setup. So yeah, I try to uh, put up the aerial roots as well. So therefore I try to wet them first, so they are a little bit more easy to bend and to turn into a pot, which we will see me do later on in this video. I might break some, I do take my chance, but I need those roots, those are, most of them have grow, has growing tips on them. And uh, yes, I put up my aerial roots, I didn't have any problems with them, with family opposite. They do adjust very easily to uh, be putting up. I'm not sure why, probably because I have a fairly high immunity in the greenhouse anyway, where this one is growing, so they are used to uh, observe moisture. And uh, yeah, we have quite some aerial roots, so I want to put them up. So we will go uh, a, a size up, maybe two, I'm not sure. We will uh, we'll, uh, have a look uh, later on in this video in what, what, what kind of top, uh, pot we need, how big we need it. Anyhow, let's zoom in a little bit on the roots so we can have a look if we uh, uh, do, uh, could let green them up a little bit more. So yeah, <laughs> it looks very weird, doesn't it? Uh, it's like like she has a, a blanket on or something like that. So this has been here for a, about an hour. And yeah, the roots are definitely greened up. Does it show on camera? I think it does over here. So yeah, this root is, uh, these roots are definitely greener than they were. Let's hope it is enough. I'm not sure, but I'm going to, uh, to repot her. And uh, yeah, I'm going to break a few roots. I know for sure, but anyhow, I use these uh, clips to uh, get this uh, paper towel in, uh, to keep it in place. So we're going to take it off and then we uh, will take her completely out of the pot. So I need to uh, change the setup a little bit with the uh, camera angle. So I think this is a little bit, uh, a bit better. Um, yeah, let's have a look. I have a clip here that can be removed. These, uh, I have the dragonfly ones and the butterflies. I like, uh, like these guys a little bit better than the normal green ones that you get when you buy an orchid most of the times. These are to, uh, originally to put, a, uh, to stake the spikes, as you might know. As you can see, I don't do that because I like them uh, growing outwards into uh, the green uh, greenhouse or into the room, but in my case, it's a greenhouse. They are, uh, bending a little bit and especially when they have blooms they got a little bit heavier and I really uh, like the look of it so therefore I don't stake my uh, um, bloom spikes anymore. So let's take off this first clock. As you can see uh, here I think this one is greener than that one. So yeah, th this didn't take up much water. 
but uh, I try to save as many as I can, of course. And let's turn it around. Sorry for the noise. Slowly. So yeah, this is something, you guys. And uh, yeah, no, I didn't do this before like this, but I saw it on other uh, growers uh, channels as well. So, but I wasn't there yet. My orchids were too young, but now they are. Uh, I have them. I grow like this for years, and I see more um, orchids that needs uh, be up potted because they do are, are doing so well. So. I thought, well, uh, at least I'm going to film this one. So I have some uh, reference for those who want to uh, know more about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> I need to take the vase uh, off. Of our, yeah, I need to put it in uh, away, of course. So let's do it like this, slowly. Like this and this. Take them out. Whoops. So yeah, some of them you can see they did take up some uh, some moisture. So I need to put a face into uh, my orchid kitchen. <laughs> we can reuse the water later when I start flushing this one. Mm, yeah, now I need to hold it with one hand. Take this thing away. Whoops, let's put you there. So I try to film it as best as I can, but this one is, uh, you yeah, know, with the area looks fairly big. But now I have the chance to give you a close up. Um, there, there's my finger there. It is. You can hopefully see that that is a keiki. And this is a new leaf, obviously. And I can see a few marks there. It's not much, but that's a sign for me that it probably needs uh, a new home. And as you can see, it's fairly uh, rooted well. But I know we have some dead roots inside of the pot. So let's uh, take her out of the outer pot. Oh, this is something, you guys. Let me adjust the camera very quickly. There we are again. I have my scissors ready. Those are sterilized, etc. So I can use them straight away because um, I need the buckets. This one. Here we go. Let's take it out. So don't be in shock. You will see some older roots. Like I did. I, I think you can see them. There are quite a few of them who are just. Uh, old and uh, probably died off but we also have an aerial root inside the pot <laughs> that's what i like to do with the older arcs i put them uh, inside of the pot and then they start to get hold of the pot as you can see <laughs> so yes he likes the setup uh anyhow but yeah the problem is when you start to repot it or you want to have completely uh, it ha have it completely out of the pot but i'm trying to uh, and I think I succeeded to get it uh, easily out of the pot. One more time, look at that. It's so beautiful how it's started to branch. See, uh, these are roots are definitely adapted to, uh, to a very wet environment, but they, they were growing in a reservoir. Okay, uh, so yeah, bear with me. I have no idea how I'm going to do this all. <laughs> I love these roots. I really want to keep them on orchid, of course, and don't break them. Okay. Yeah. Oops, there we go. I'm going to make noise. And this one, you can see, this one is completely, uh, yeah, it has some pebbles, but the rest looks like completely uh, lekka. So that's from at least three years back. I think even more this one. But it did uh, take well. Now it will be potted up in uh, pumice later on. You probably know I like pumice a bit more. But it did get hold of the pot quite quite well. So I slowly try to take it out of this pot. I hope I try to 
squeeze the pot a little bit. So I hope the roots will uh, the, uh, yeah get uh, loosen loosen up. Oops, I'm sorry. Lo <laughs> loosen, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Loosen up. Every time I try to speak, some uh, pebbles did fall, fall out of the pot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, I cannot lay it down, so I need to do it like this. I don't want to cut the pot. I don't think it's necessary, actually. But slowly but surely, it will come out of this pot. I just take my time. Ah, here is a problem. I need to break this root. It's going, growing out of one of, out of a hole here, and it's going back into that hole. I don't know if you can see it, but that one is holding it in place completely. So I am going to sacrifice that root for sure. I'm not going to cut a pot for it. It's, it's already brown, but it's 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 firm, so it's not dead. But well, a part of it is going to be now because I cut it. Let's see if this did help. It's starting to uh, loosen up for sure. But I'm taking my time. I don't want to put too much pressure on the pot. Slowly building up the, the pressure. Yeah, there it goes. There it goes. I hope you can see it. I'm wiggling it a little bit. Check my roots here, everything is in place, so I should take it off now, be able to take it off. Ah, oh, this root is stuck. No, there you go. Whoops. Almost there, there's one root still attached. Ah, it's, it's stuck. And there we go, there we go. So we have an empty pot. And we have roots. Yes, <laughs> for sure. I'm going to put it on the edge of the table so I hopefully can... Oops! Oh, and I don't want to break that new growth there, the cakey, basil cakey. So much to watch out for. This girl, but you can see, we have definitely some older roots. Well, actually these are dark, but believe it or not, they're still firm. But I'm going to cut a few of them. We have some uh, mold on these guys. Those are dead for sure. So just slowly, but surely I'm going to cut off uh, some, some roots. Um, because we don't need them anymore. As you can see, I can get, get the velamen off very easily. Oops. Oh, luckily. I thought I did cut off a whole cluster of good roots, but luckily I didn't. So yeah, this one has obviously a good root system and enough roots to uh, support itself, even though I would cut off some good ones, but still, I try to maintain as many roots on this orchid as, as I can, because it did take quite some years to get to this point, of course. So yeah, it, uh, it, it really helps them as, of course, having a good root system, the more the better. So let me check. These are dark, once again, very dark, but they're still alive. Uh, pretty firm, so I don't uh, take them off. And it's always the case, especially with family opsis. I see those dark roots, I think, oh, they are all dead. But in many cases, these days, I found that they are not dead at all. They're just darken up somehow. Probably because of a type of fertilizer that I use. Well, actually, it's more like a hormone stuff. Um, I have it in one of my videos, and if I don't forget, I can show you the back. It's, it's. Uh, I don't. I cannot remember the name of it. So that's for later in this uh, video. And I should be able to put it a link in the video description. How about that? Maybe you want to check it out. And I noticed. Yeah, that's already a year ago, but. Um, 
Matthew, I'm sorry Matthew, oh, your name was gone for a minute, <laughs> but you're back. Plan, uh, hello uh, plant lovers, that's his channel name. Matthew, from uh, out, all the way from out of uh, Australia, at least for uh, from my uh, part of the world, it's all the way uh, up to Australia. Um, he uses the uh, same type of uh, fungus, a very healthy, beneficial fungus for orchids. And he was the first one on YouTube I saw use the uh, exact same stuff that I did use for years as well. Uh, I, I probably it is, the brand name is a little bit different, but it's, it's pretty much the same stuff. And uh, so this was kind of funny. I never saw it before. But I think because it grow inorganically, I thought, well, I can put in uh, every half year a little bit of that, that stuff to probably make them a little bit happier in, in the inside of the pot. And so far, as you can see, most of my art, not all of them, of course, but quite, quite a few of them do really well uh, root-wise. So I think it, it might be beneficial. And if it doesn't uh, do much, it's, it certainly doesn't hurt them if you don't overdo it but that's that counts for everything you you do you don't want to throw stuff on the floor <laughs> uh you don't want to overdo it actually what in life is good when you overdo it and nothing i think so for us <laughs> as well and for the plants as well don't overdo it not necessary so yeah let me check I cannot lay this down, so I, I don't have a better view for you guys. <laughs> oh my god, I need to <laughs> clean up my whole orchid room just because I did re whoops, repot one, one orchid. Here is the root system again. Oh, I, I'm not sure how uh, well this uh, video <laughs> will come out. I apologize in, in advance, but I think it's, it's okay. I really keep checking my screen, so I'm in frame. Um, so, so you hopefully can every, see everything I'm basically doing here. So I'm just checking, squeezing those roots. This one, look how dark it is. Let me, uh, I have pebbles everywhere anyhow. So you see that? I can squeeze, this is, this is just firm, it's hard. And not hard in the sense that it, it, it get woody like the vanda orchids uh, roots do. But you see, it's it's just leaving this this stuff, and it really reminds me of that that uh, fungi stuff that I just did talk about. So I will uh, definitely have a look at that. I'll let you see what I'm talking about. I should say. But so far, yeah, this one, this one, you can see the difference here, probably. See my thumb there, that's the root. Let's check if I squeeze it, you can see it goes everywhere. And if I pull it, there we go. So that's that, definitely. Maybe the inner root, the actual root, well, we added this one, feels pretty firm still, but the um, development is that. So I'm going to leave this on. This is a nice, healthy color still. In the yeah, I don't think it can do any much, or at least much damage if I leave it in there. And I did found another on that root here. Yeah. So let's, yeah, you see, whole piece of black velum. And there we go. And a bit of algae. I think not that much, because I use dark pots, but I think I'm going to leave it like this. We did uh, clean up a little bit. Let's uh, try to lay it on the back easily. <laughs> yes, oh, I can move my hand again. <laughs> but look at this. So yeah, I thought I would have more dead roots, Deciding uh, only on, uh, or based on the color of the roots, I should say. But if you look at this, it's not that much. And it's been in this pot uh, from 2018. Uh, oh, sorry for the glare. So four years, and it was in December, so almost four years. So you can, and I had it before that already. Then I had it in uh, bark and moss and cell watering, which was not as successful for me. 
But then, uh, as you can see, all Lekka, for the exception of the top layer of pebbles, but the rest is Lekka. So that were my early days, so it's, it's, it's hanging in there quite long. <laughs> And uh, remember, I did need to learn the system. So this one has been through a, a lot, but it did uh, get new roots again. I barely lost the whole root system at one point, I can remember, and, but it did come back and then it started to grow. And I now see some discoloration on the leaves. I don't think it's really because it's in a bad shape or anything, but it might try to give me a sign that it really needs to uh, be cleaned up. Four years is pretty much uh, pretty long in the same system, but it's doable as you can see. Some older roots die off. Yes, that would be, uh, that is to be expected, of course, but not that many as you can see. So that said and done, I try to put in as much information as I can because I do get these really wonderful questions. And I think, oh yeah, of course I should put it in my, uh, in my video. So I try to overthink it, and especially for uh, the ones that would try to assist them, the new uh, growers, I hope I can help you out. And of course, if you already have a similar system, you might be interested in it as well, because I still watch other growers growing in cell water, and you never know what you can see. We always learn something, I think. So I'm going to clean up my hands, especially this one, and I will, I will be uh, back with the uh, new pots, and a new potting media. So I did uh, clean up my hands and you, in other uh, repotting videos you see me wearing gloves but if it's on my own orchids, no new ones, I like to uh, just do it bare hand because I know my orchids and I know there's nothing in there that can be harmful. So because I don't like to wear gloves, that's basically the uh, on the line there <laughs> the reason why so as you can see we do got uh, go up quite a pot size this is i think 18 or 20 centimeters um let me check sometimes it does say on uh, yeah it's 20 it's 20 centimeters it's uh, on the near it's uh, here on the bottom it says it's 20 centimeters so we go from 15 to 20. I have a long, uh, I keep calling them water meters. I know there's an official name for them, but uh, and this one is stuck. That happens, so let me fix that quickly. That's because this red thing is not attached to um, the floating part actually, which is this. So it needs to be attached, otherwise it will not work, of course. Let me do this like this. So I push it in fairly hard and I hope it will stick now. Yes, I think it will do and then it will do the job. And you put it in, back in as you can see. Oops, there it goes. And now you see a part sticking out of the tube. Put the head of the tube on again. Oops, I'm sorry off camera well it's very easily I think there's only one hole and there it is so now it uh, can let me know if it needs water or not but so we have the pot the water meter and then we have the outer pot it's only also a very big one you probably see some holes back in there here that's because I did use it as a self uh, I'm sorry a semi hydroponic uh, pot years ago and I stopped using those type of uh, setups. I'm now uh, most, yeah, mostly uh, self-watering. So I put the hooks on the same end of these holes because otherwise I will uh, have water coming out and it's always hanging on an angle, as you probably know, on my fan Leopsis wall. So it will be like this. So we have more water here than in the back where the holes are. So I hope I will not overdo it and have some water leaking out, but it will not be the end of the world. But this uh, orchid is not the lowest one. So there are some orchids underneath that one. So I don't want to have to uh, let this drip on the, on the neighbors downstairs, <laughs> of course, because of the uh, potential rot, of course. 
So I need this water meter, that's basically what I'm on the, in the front of the pot, because if I put it there, I need more water in the pot to let this uh, level rise, and then probably I will have too much water. So I need to make sure that this one is about the front of the pot, somewhere here. So it does make sense in the end, if you don't completely do understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so now we need to get all these aerial roots inside of this pot plus a media plus this water meter and it needs to be upright fairly otherwise it will not work so yeah wish me uh, luck i think <laughs> first i'm going to put in a little layer of pumice so i'm going from lacquer to pumice So just a little teeny tiny layer to uh, make it easier a little bit because I think it wouldn't be the end of the world that these aerial roots would be directly in the reservoir because they are kind of used to being in a very environment, uh, wet environment, I'm sorry. But yeah, we have quite some roots to bury in there. So are we in screen? Yes, well, here we go. First attempt. And there goes my water, water meter already. Yeah, there's a root attached to that. So now I need to turn this around while I'm slowly letting the arc go downwards. But I need to keep turning this so the roots turn as well and find their place like this inside of the pot. Well, at least that's the plan. I need to adjust a few of those area roots here and there because they are trying to uh, escape. Well, this one actually, oh, this one did break. Um, yeah, I'm gonna cut it off. This one may give some problems. I start to rot, so that's why I cut it off. And we will continue. Try to get it in there. I need to push a few, I think, because they are now tangled, getting tangled on one another. So the roots are keeping it shorter, um, more upwards. Hard to describe. Am I still a frame? Yes. So I need to get that water meter. Oops. In front, let me check this. Yeah, it's a bit of a puzzle, you guys. So I'm really taking my time. I hope you don't mind too much. <laughs> so yeah, this is a bit of a challenge. Not only a puzzle. Yes, I think I found a solution. For those area loads that are really sticking out there in the back, I'm going to let it uh, get in the angle again lay it down a little bit and that make, gives me a little bit more room for the roots as you can see it's now almost on the edge of the pot so yes there's one root sticking out very much putting that in so I'm now here working over this uh, this area trying to slowly push in those roots a little bit one by one um, because this front part I'm really happy with. The water meter is also in the front, which we wanted. And now I'm just have a look inside of the pot. I can now let it be in, on its own in the pot. So we are getting somewhere. I'm standing on some lekka. <laughs> uh, so I think this is, this is beautiful. This is very, very good. Let me see if I, yeah, this is, uh, this is enough. Yeah, it's, I um, must admit the water mist is, is going to be fairly high up in the pot. <laughs> but that's not a reason for me to get it out again. I'm so happy it did get in. I hope you can see it. I think we did well. Do we see any broken root tips? No, I don't think so. I hope so. But yeah, now we need some media, of course. But this is the first step and I was not looking forward to do this. I might, I probably am sure that I did break some roots, but 
they were very f uh, fairly uh, fairly uh, flexible I must admit so wetting them before you do this really helps it really really does help so I'm uh, going to see yes we are in frame <clears throat> And now I'm going to slowly fill it up with this beautiful, beautiful pumice. I always need to show it. I don't know why, because I love it, basically, is the reason. <laughs> so, so nice stuff. So yeah, here we go. And this is basically uh, almost like a routine uh, putting. I try to put in the in the pumice very slowly and, and very nicely, but I'm sorry, I do notice that if I have some fairly large air pockets with family ops, there's no problem at all. They love it as long as you can, uh, you can keep it, uh, the water uh, wicking up towards the edge of the pot as best as you can. You will not have any problem. So basically what I'm saying, if you have huge air pockets, obviously the wicking part will not work anymore. But a few of them is not the end of the world. Plus, as we saw, this arcade has very long area loots who are now there, so it will suck the water up on its own anyhow. So we should be fine. I hope you can see it, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I keep referring to the position of the camera and I keep saying, I hear myself saying, I hope you can see this, I hope you can see that. <laughs> that is because, to be honest, when I started growing orchids, I really wanted to see everything so I could fully understand what was happening, uh, what that orchid grower in, in, in uh, the one that I was uh, watching the video of was completely doing. So therefore I keep referring to it because I know I understand that you really want to see what's happening there. So I try, try my best. And there will be more videos. So if you have some suggestions or let's say um, I had, for example, uh, sometimes I have some comments on what type of media did I use, how much was the ratio, etc. Let me know. I will uh, look uh, look into it for the next video. For this one, it's very easy because I only use the large pumice. I don't use Cintiq or the smaller one, only the large one, because the fells do love it. Whoops. So yeah, that's very uh, easy. But yeah, I like uh, like helping out where I can, and. I'm only getting better at it if you uh, let me know what you like to see and etc. So I'm going to wiggle the pot a little bit. Try to uh, get those pumice into the air holes. So we have quite some room again. That was the plan of course. So I'm really filling up slowly but surely the, uh, this very large pot. And the orchid had some uh, leka attached to some roots, which is uh, would be to be expected. Not even that much, but so we will have a little bit of leka in here. But that's the beauty. Oops, there was my mic. That's the beauty of uh, inorganic media. It doesn't matter at all. And I love, love that. Don't have to think about pieces of bark anymore, etc. It's all inorganic, so it will not cause any problem as long as I keep that, that um, pH in the reservoir uh, at a good level. Don't overfeed it, of course, but I don't, uh, we don't do that anymore. We know better now. <laughs> so yeah, that pH level is very important. And I have videos on that. I have videos on that. And there will be more. I have uh, I have some quite interest, interesting things to talk about, I think, in the near future. Um, because I did some little tests. I didn't talk about... Uh, well, maybe once I did mention it. Sort of. 
but I wanted to know be sure and next year after the winter into the fall it will be one year year that I'm growing a little bit of different setup with a few of my plants still self self-watering of course don't get me wrong but then we can really see how they do and so that's for for uh, for um, next year and don't get me wrong I'm not trying to be uh, sort of kind of nasty <laughs> about it but I want to be sure that, that it works otherwise I don't like to film it I don't want to give a wrong information so and that doesn't mean that I'm going to change this this is this is the best setup for me for this orchid so she is definitely not going to have another uh, different environment so that's said and done I think in the meantime uh, so yeah we have some air pockets you can see here a little bit but a little bit further into the pot I can see the pumice I don't know if you can see it I think you see some spots there so I'm going to leave those aerial uh, air pockets there because I really think they are beneficial in this case but don't overdo it so you can see this is completely covered with the pumice and here we have wow about this side this side is also beautiful a lot of pumice is there so yeah this is beautiful I think <laughs> you might disagree you might disagree let me see do I have enough pebbles yes I think so I'm sorry for the noise so I have these pebbles again for the top layer just a little bit she didn't really need them I think because <laughs> I have them in my other pots as well so now I use them in every pot because I like to, to have a similar look to the orchid this is just who I am. That they are potted up in yeah, almost the same way with the same colors. Darker colors in my case. So yeah, I'm going to flush uh, this one. Again, just with uh, some RO water and some seaweed. The water that we earlier used to uh, uh, wet the aerial roots, uh, aerial roots, I'm going to use again just to flush it. And then I will give this one a reservoir because he was obviously used to self-watering. Um, but I don't give it any feed. I, I only keep it with the RO water with a little bit of kelp or seaweed or albumic in my case, which is basically the same. So I'm going to do that and then I will see you back inside of the greenhouse where she is uh, back at her place but in a new home. So I dis just did... Uh, a flush there uh, with uh, with the orchids and I have some uh, other water left that is a uh, um, water that I didn't use so that's clean the black had uh, already used one and of course the vase in the background there so it's not that I reuse water to be sure so I thought well before we go let's have a look in my uh, orchids feeding cabinet uh, because otherwise I do forget and I have the stuff that I was talking about here it's a powdery stuff and I have the one that is specific for the uh, hydroculture, as you can see, uh, for hydroponics and hydroculture. Mine is TNC Mycore Hydro. It's called like that. And it contains this stuff. I hope you can see it. I think you can. And you see there a humic acid listed. I think the humic acid is the thing at least i know for, for sure that one can give a, a discoloration on the roots so a more brown color maybe there are a few more in here ingredients that can do that but the humic acid can do it for sure so and how do i know that well i have something that is called bio heaven it's humic uh, acid as well and i did have the discoloration already on that as well uh, of with it i should yeah. say the feeds, some rain mix and other stuff but uh, let's have a look at uh, my Leodoro so therefore we need to go out well not outside but into the uh, greenhouse I wish we could go outside well actually then I probably didn't have part of her up <laughs> but anyhow so yeah she's on the, exactly the same spot 
but she was put it up in uh, something like this same pots this one and now you can see some improvement this one looks very small now in comparison to this one but yeah as we saw it has a uh, quite a lot of uh, arrow roots who were, who were uh, quite long and we have some spikes I have five yes and some branches but yeah most of the times they uh, start to bloom more in spring and summer when we have more light so you you have seen it on uh, in bloom for sure in my uh, videos once again there we have that cakey uh, basil cakey over here so now it's spotted here as well even though we have some leaves I was hoping that it may put out some roots as well to get even more strength in uh, this plant and who knows if that starts a uh, another set of four or five spikes in a couple of years of course but it may get up to become uh, quite a uh, nice plant to look at who knows who knows but yeah as you can see it was a little bit yellowing so maybe uh, some magnesium I'm not sure I'm not sure I don't think it's very bad but I need to keep an eye on it well actually we have some spotting here so is that magnesium I should have enough magnesium in there for sure some calcium maybe it's something else I'm not sure but overall I think uh, she's doing fine and uh, hopefully happy in her new uh, new pot so yeah I hope you enjoyed this video this was some challenge and I will have more as you can see over here for example look at these aerial roots so this one is really hanging uh, on the side of the pot making new ones I'm not sure I really need to repot it now but if I need to oh, I did one in the, in the top corner so yeah that's going to be uh, we, we will get uh, into some puzzles yeah but if it's not needed then I will leave them because I really like the look of them these aerial roots so yeah as you can see we have quite a lot of them who do that so yeah can you imagine if i needed to repot them someday i will probably but anyhow for sure not now <laughs> thank you for watching i really hope to uh, enjoy this video and like i said uh, earlier on if you have any questions or, or something like that please let them uh, let me know in the comments thank you for watching and i really hope you enjoyed this video and i hope to see you at one of my next ones bye bye